Welcome back to the Chad Easty Show, broadcasting live from the state capitol. Brought to you by the Cactus Theater, Galatia Insurance, and H and H Trailers. Uh, reminder uh, to uh, log on to H and H Trailers' brand new website, hhtrailersales.com. Uh, whether you are in the need for uh, horse trailers, living quarters, cargo trailers, flatbed trailers, used trailers, you can check out their entire inventory right now online at hhtrailersales.com. We are, of course, uh, here in the office of Representative John Frulo, and uh, uh, Chairman Frulo is uh, with us this morning. Uh, what have you been working on uh, in this session? We've heard a lot from... Uh, uh, from uh, some of the statewide elected officials. So uh, what, what are you working on in this session? Well, first off, I'll plug HH trail, Trailer Sales. I actually bought a 16-foot trailer from them uh, a few years ago. It's been a great trailer, no problem. So they are uh, great people over there. I, I, exactly. I can give you a, a good testimony there. Uh, we, we've got a pretty busy session this time. We filed about uh, 25 bills. Uh, and, of course, the deadline to file bills is over unless you go through special permissions and things like that. Uh, so pretty excited about that. We've got a lot of uh, different insurance type bills, some CRT bills, some uh, bills uh, for Lubbock, some bills for Texas Tech. And, you know, the normal type uh, things that we're doing is some trying to make things better. And in other cases, uh, uh, one of my primary jobs down here and, uh, for all of us is to keep things happening out in our part of the world that we don't want to happen. Things that might work well in the Metroplex or in Harris County are not necessarily a good fit for Lubbock. Right. Uh, let's talk about one of the issues that I think has been uh, brought up quite a bit, and that is local control. Local control versus when the state uh, gets involved. There was a story, I believe, from the Texas Tribune uh, just a couple of days ago that's, uh, where the governor said maybe we need to have this, you know, uh, an overarching law, uh, you know, where, where the state says, hey, you can't, local entities, local governments, you can't go over you know, what the state is doing, or you can't impose more punishment than what the state is doing. Um, you, we have a property tax bill that just passed through the Senate, I believe it was SB2. Um, where, where is the line between local control and when the state government needs to get involved? Well, that's a great question, and, and uh, my feeling for it is like last session, I passed a, well, we, we passed, I authored a law that basically had to do with pocket knives. And what was happening is a, a pocket knife that you had that maybe your grandfather gave you that he carried for 30 years and you've been carrying for 20 years, depending on the, the way a local ordinance worked, is legal in, say, maybe Austin, but illegal in Corpus Christi. And there are different places where it would be legal and illegal, just based on that same pocket knife on the, the local laws. So it made criminals out of people who just happened to have that knife in their pocket for years because they were in a different town. And so things like that, I think we're, we have a reasonable expectation to have somewhat of a similar law across the state. Uh, I'm, I'm okay with that being the case and us having a state law that says you can't make something more restrictive than... Uh, or it is, depending on what it is. Uh, texting while driving is, is a bill that I voted for. I voted for uh, Speaker Craddock's bill uh, every time it's been up. And, and what it does is oftentimes we're traveling from city to city. Well, you'll have a city like Lubbock that has no laws. Yet, as we were talking during a break, in Austin, if you get caught talking on a cell phone that's not a hands-free device, it could be a $500 fine. Well, if you miss those signs posted on the outside of cities, you know, depending on what they do, how they post them, all of a sudden, what, came, what was going to be a nice, enjoyable weekend turns into a $500 expense uh, just because you happen to be talking on that phone and something you do in your town all the time. Now, I'm, I'm saying you shouldn't be doing that, but th that's the kind of stuff that bothers me where you go from one city to another and it changes. You know, we have the, the Uber uh, Lyft, the rideshare uh, uh, bill that will be up. Uh, and uh, I, I think that, uh, you know, things like that where you, you want to look at it and say, what makes sense? What can we expect? And, and with what uh, the rideshare folks do now, you know, it makes it easier to get around. We, we've seen actually where drunk driving goes down, all those different things. There's, there's a lot of good side benefits 
to those kind of laws. And so, you know, it, it just depends on the control. I think at the end of the day, we like to run Lubbock the way we like to run Lubbock. And so we want to be uh, cognizant of those facts and try and do that and protect it to where there is a difference. There are differences. That's, again, what makes Texas so great is the way we do stuff here versus a lot of these other states. Compare us to California. I mean, they just do some goofy things out there. Let's talk about, uh, again, on, on the issue of local control, uh, this, the, the, this whole deal on uh, cap on property taxes before it goes to voters, SB2. Uh, where, where are your thoughts on this? Because uh, there was a, a quote from uh, Senator Perry when this went through, the, uh, went through the Senate that he wasn't too much of a fan, that, that he knew a lot of rural people would be upset about this, especially the rural governments would be upset about this. What about you? Where do you stand on this issue? Well, of course, you'll have uh, Senator Perry in later on, and I'll let him talk about it. Again, his district is vastly different than my district. It uh, yeah. contains my district, uh, but he also has a lot of rural areas, smaller areas, and so he can, he can get into specifics, and I, I don't want to speak for that because basically my district, as you know, is all fully contained within Lubbock County. Right. And so our situation is substantially different with the types of property we have, uh, and how it's set up. Having said that, property taxes are killing us. We never own our own home, and work needs to be done on that. The last thing we can do is retire and then have some of these increases, and I've seen increases in property taxes where they're doubling. You know, a particular piece of property, especially if there's uh, not a lot going on outside of oil interests, and then we've seen the decline uh, in the valuation, and all of a sudden, people that had been paying a certain amount for a number of years, it gradually went up as those properties increased, property, uh, mineral properties went down, and all of a sudden, their bills are doubling, and, and there needs to be some kind of relief there. It's also interesting how those different amounts kind of bump up again, whatever uh, maximum we have, and, and so that's what we've seen. So there, there needs to be some, uh, uh, you know, some type of work done there where we're not priced outside of our home. Visiting with uh, Chairman Frulo here in the uh, in his office, and uh, here in just a little bit uh, we'll have the uh, House Speaker. Uh, those who are watching on Facebook Live, they saw the House Speaker come in. So uh, you, there's a waiting area in your office, so they're taking advantage of that. Uh, what are some of the other big issues that that uh, is uh, that, that will come up? Uh, we have about a minute or so left. Some of the big issues that you're going to focus on that you think are the big priorities coming up in this session. Well, I, I think one of the, the big issues I'm working on is, uh, without getting too much in the weeds, is balance billing and the surprise bills that people get when they go to their... Uh, you know, what they assume is their in-network provider, and then they walk away and they have a bill for $800, 1000 $2,000. And, uh, you know, they're, they're not used to that. So what we've done is we've changed the mediation process. We've put more people into that process. And we, uh, you know, again, magically, this, these bills that were, uh, when the number was uh, $1,000 for mediation, we dropped it down to 500 We saw a lot of those different bills hitting right there at $999. We're giving people a chance to get that reduced, and what it did reduce it to was about $180.